Hi everyone, um, I'm coming with my second video and today I wanted to discuss how I had my second advisor meeting. I didn't touch about, I didn't talk about my first advisor meeting on my first um, video so I'm going to kind of go over that and go over my second one and kind of talk about the differences and kind of the information and lack thereof between both of them. Um, I, the only reason why I'm doing this because I can't stress enough how important it is to gather as much information from as many people as possible. So even if you feel like you're being a nag, um, you have to consider the fact that you don't know the information and perhaps they've said it a million times to a million different people, but it's new to you. So don't ever feel insecure about asking anybody anything in reference to pre-med, um, med school or your post baccalaureate sorry my cat is uh over there trying to chomp on some plants <clears throat> but so okay let me just kind of go back my first advisor meeting was uh, a couple months ago and it was a female in the health division of the college that i was accepted to for pre-med and uh, although she wasn't the correct advisor for some reason she was the one that was assigned to me for my advisor meeting but she still gave me a lot of great information. Um, the one thing that she told me is, you know, and I know this isn't necessarily on the track of being in med school, but sometimes you need to have information outside of that, just kind of like moral support. It's, it's a mental um, game that you, sometimes you play with yourself to maybe psych yourself out of actually completing something in med school would definitely be one of those situations. And so I was feeling a little insecure about the fact that I am, you know, 30 years old and returning back to the classroom. Um, I swore up and down when I got my degree that I was not going to return to school. I had, you know, even at one point taken the GRE to get my master's and I didn't really do so hot on that. I think because I just mentally wasn't prepared because I just knew that I really did not want to continue in the business world. And I know you can get master's degrees and everything, but at that point, that was what I was setting my mind to do. And I just, my heart was not in it because I just could not imagine spending more money on a degree that wasn't going to equate to anything. So she actually gave me a lot of great information in saying that there are a ton of people that are, you know, my age and older returning to the classroom for the exact same thing so if you're out there and you feel like oh wow i am you know not 20 something years old this is i'm gonna be the oddball out and i'm gonna stick like a sore thumb you know stick out like a sore thumb don't be discouraged you're not the only one um there's a lot of people like you and I that are going back to the classroom and you should never feel insecure about wanting to learn. So moving forward onto the information and what she gave me, um, she did say that the best route for me, since I do want to be a child and adolescent psychiatrist, that cell molecular science would be the best option at this particular school because the only other selection that I could take that would be a science post-baccalaureate for my pre-med requirements would be um, kind of like on, along the lines of veterinary science, which, you know, although children can act like animals sometimes, um, that definitely would not help me. So um, cell and molecular science is going to be the degree that I'm going to graduate with because I, I mean I figure why not get the second degree I'm already going to be in the class for you know enough time frame to actually get the credits accumulated to graduate um, maybe once I get closer to that time period I might change my mind and be like you know what <laughs> I don't want to walk I don't need to do all that but um, considering that my undergrad I finished out online although I had started in a private college I did I never walked for my degree and my I think my mom feels like she kind of like lost that I don't know that little stance that mommy stance that's like you know I got to see you walk across the stage I'm like okay you saw that at high school but I know that was forever ago um, but anyways uh, back to the information at the advisor meeting she did inform me that, you know, it's going to be tough, although I don't have a undergrad in anything that is science, that doesn't mean that I can't, you know, obviously 
get the tutoring and information. Um, she did tell me that they don't necessarily teach directly to the MCAT, although there are courses for that. She tried. She said that the college uh, had once did that, and they didn't see a lot of success in their students getting into other med schools outside of the one that is on their campus. So she said that um, they do teach to the MCAT, but not completely like they used to. They try and make sure that they have well-rounded candidates. And what that means is you want to make sure that you have candidates that have a lot more to them than just sciences. So you're going to be taking, you know, if you haven't in your undergrad, you're going to be taking all of your English classes and, you know, any other uh, math classes that perhaps in your undergrad you didn't take. They just want to make sure that you're more of a candidate that is appealing to any med school that you're trying to go to. So moving forward, um, she also did touch on the fact that I want to make sure that I start early uh, you know, seeing where I want to go to school because a lot of schools, although they pretty much have the same standards for their pre-med students, there are some schools, especially if you're looking at, you know, maybe like the Harvards or Columbia or something like that, which I'm not looking um, at those particular schools only because the cost and also the location of the schools is not particularly where I want to be, but to each its own. Um, she said that you want to start early looking at what schools you want to go to for med school and a lot of people are like well that's that's a given but for a lot of people it's not a given and they get so caught up in what their pre-med courses are they aren't really focused on you know the end goal which is you're trying to get to med school to be a physician so you need to make sure that you're aligning yourself with the requirements of the med school that you are hoping to attend um, so she, she had a lot of great information. She did give me some information on some courses that I needed to take in order to succeed and make sure that I'm meeting all of the requirements. She also did let me know, and you might want to check with the schools that you're attending. Um, I thought this was really a neat thing that they have a course that will help you with the inter interview process when you're ready for med school. Um, I have no idea what the interview would look like to get into med school. So I think it's really an amazing thing that this school does have, you know, set a, has set aside a course to actually, you know, do mock interviews and mock questions and really look over your resume and find, you know, um, any errors that need to be fixed or anything like that. I think that is something that a lot of schools should do, not only if you're in pre-med, but basically, anywhere. I mean, if you're graduating from college, the number one thing is trying to find a job. So for this college to do this, I think that's great. Okay, so I know I'm kind of rambling, but let me jump to what my um, second advisor meeting. That one, that one was okay. Um, he was, he's the main person for the pre-med department. Um, and he didn't really give me a lot of information. He just kept saying, you just need sciences, you need sciences. And then he had quoted, uh, well, not quoted, had said that my GPA was a 3.1 um, when it came in. And I'm like, uh, no, my graduating GPA was a 3.46. So, you know, I had to go to that admissions office. Well, here to come find out, they didn't transfer all of my credit. So I'm going to have to go back and do a degree audit to see what they didn't transfer because... I didn't take any BS classes, so I'm kind of like confused and perplexed on what exactly didn't get transferred because everything I took is pretty much the same classes that you see at most colleges. I'm definitely going to have to look at that and see what did not transfer over because starting out with a GPA that's way lower than mine, some people might go, oh, it's still a three point something. But when you're, you know, in basically competition with other people to get into med school, you want to make sure that you're starting out with the highest GPA possible. So it's kind of a blow to have somebody tell you that's what your transfer GPA is just because the school didn't transfer all of your credit over that you graduated with so I'm not I wasn't too thrilled to hear that um, the one good thing that came out of the meeting because there wasn't a lot of information that he provided to me is that since I did not have anything as a um, science really except for one class in my undergrad to instead of going directly to the university in summer I should take my two prerequisite classes which is um, intro to chemistry and physics I should take it um, at the community college, which I had never really considered because 
and I've always had really great grades. So community college has never been something that's been a part of my list of colleges to attend, but it does make sense because it is a lot cheaper. And if you've been trying to find any type of money for your post-baccalaureate pre-med, please let me know and good luck. <laughs> um, it looks like the only option is loans and your savings. And, you know, if you have parents that can afford to just pay for it outright. But um, so what I'm going to do this summer is um, go to the community college here for my two prerequisites in the summertime. And then when fall starts, I'll then attend the university that I was accepted to. I just bumped out my... Um, my term that I wanted to start at. So I'm pretty excited. I've already applied to the community college here and their classes don't open up for summer. Um, in a few, it opens about in a few weeks. Uh, it's March, I think the second week of March or so that they said that the classes should be available to view. So I'm really hoping they have a couple campuses here that um, they will have something for me to you know, take that are the classes that I need and then I can transfer with no issue. But that's all I have for right now. Let me know if you guys had to take prereqs at a community college or, you know, what kind of information that you obtained from your advisor meetings. I'm really curious to find out. All right. Bye, guys.